let's take a look at how to evaluate expressions with decimals. We have 40.6 plus 2 times 9. Okay, the first thing we want to think about is order of operations. Okay, remember PEMDAS describes the order of operations. First you do any parentheses, then any exponents, then any multiplication or division, and then finally any addition or subtraction. Now we don't have parentheses or exponents, but we do need to make sure that we multiply before we add. So the first thing I'm going to do is say 2 times 9. Okay, well 2 times 9 is 18. Then I'm going to add 40.6 plus 18. Now when you're adding with decimals, it's helpful to make both numbers decimals. So 18, remember, is the same thing as 18.0. And the reason I like to write it that way is because now I can see that everything is lined up when I line up my decimal points in the two numbers that I'm adding. And I'm also going to line up the decimal point in my answer, right? It should be right underneath where the other two decimal points are. If I add in the tenths place 6 plus 0, that's going to give me 6. In the ones place, 0 plus 8 gives me 8. And in the tens place, 5 plus or I'm sorry, 4 plus 1 gives me 5. So when I add those together, 40.6 plus 18.0, I get 58.6. Okay, so that's going to be my answer to the whole question. This time, we have 25 plus 9 times 35.7. Now, just like before, I have to think order of operations, what would I do first? And I would multiply before I would add. Now, remember, when you're multiplying, you can multiply in either order. You could say 9 times 35.7, or you can say 35.7 times 9. And it doesn't make a difference. It's going to give you the same answer, right? That's our commutative property of multiplication. Now, I think it's going to be easier to write it this way because now I can just multiply 9 by all three of those digits. Okay, when you're multiplying with a decimal, you can ignore the decimal at first, think of it as 357 times 9, and then in our answer, we're going to go back and take care of that decimal at the end. Okay, so first, when I multiply, I'm going one digit at a time. So first, I'm thinking, what is 9 times 7? Well, 9 times 7 gives me 63, so I'm going to write the 3, carry the 6. Okay, now I'm thinking 9 times 5. Well, 9 times 5 gives me 45, and then I still have to add that 6 onto it, which gives me 51. So I'm going to write the 1 and carry the 5. Now I'm thinking 9 times 3. Well, 9 times 3 gives me 27, and then I have to add on that 5, which gives me 32. And remember I said we were going to go back and handle the decimal at the end. Well, at the very end, when you're done multiplying, you can say, okay, I had one digit that was after the decimal point all together between those two numbers, so I'm going to make sure my answer has one digit after the decimal point. So this is going to be 321.3. Okay, so now my question is 25 plus... 321.3. Well, just like before, when I add, I'm going to add the 25 here. I'm going to think of that as a 25.0 so I can line up my decimal point, right? 25 and 25.0 have the exact same meaning. When I'm adding, I'm going to line up the decimal point and then I'm going to add the numbers in each place. So 3 plus 0 is 3. 1 plus 5 gives me 6, 2 plus 2 gives me 4, and 3, there's nothing here, so that's like a 0, that would just be 3. All right, so all together, that's going to give me 2 times 18.8 .8 plus 47.1. Okay, remember we have to multiply first before we add. So I'm going to write it this way, 18.8 .8 times 
times 2. And first, don't worry about the decimal at first. I'm going to multiply 2 by all three of these numbers, and then I'm going to go put the decimal on my answer. Okay, so 2 times 8 gives me 16. So I'm going to write the 6, carry the 1. 2 times 8 gives me 16 again, plus that 1 gives me 17. So I'm going to write the 7, carry the 1. 2 times 1 gives me 2, plus the 1 gives me 3. Now notice I had one digit after a decimal point in one of the numbers I was multiplying. So I'm going to make sure to put the answer in front of one of those digits. So that's going to give me 37.6. Okay, and that was the answer for just this first part, 2 times 18.8. So I still need to add 37.6 plus 47.1. Okay, and I'm going to make sure that when I add, I'm lining up my decimal point. My decimal point would be right here. Okay, and my decimal point is going to go in the same place in my answer. So 6 plus 1 gives me 7. Four, uh, 7 plus 7 is 14, so I'm going to write the 4 carry the 1. Okay, 3 and 4 is 7, plus that extra 1 is 8. So all together, I wind up with 84.7. Okay, 7 times 112.2 divided by 18.7. Okay, well in this case, notice I have multiplication and division. They're the same level in order of operations. So when you have two things that are the same level, you go from left to right. So since this is on the left, I'm going to start by multiplying 7 times 112.2, and then I'm going to take that answer and divide it by 18.7. Okay, so I'm going to write it like this, 112.2 times 7. Okay, so I'm going to multiply all four of those digits by 7, and then I'll make sure to put the decimal point in the right spot on my answer. Okay, well, 7 times 7 is 49, so I'm going to write the 9, carry the 4. 7 times 2 is 14, plus the 4 gives me 18, so I'm going to write the 8, carry the 1. 7 times 1 is 7, plus the 1 gives me 8, and 7 times 1 is 7. Okay, now we can't forget completely about that decimal point. Remember, we had one digit after the decimal point, so I'm going to make sure I have one digit after the decimal point in my answer. So that's 788.9. And then I still have to take that and divide it by 18.7. Okay, so let's set this up. We're going to say... 788.9 divided by 18.7. Okay, now it looks a little tricky when you have the decimals in there, right? I don't want to think about dividing by 18.7. So what I can do to make this not a decimal is I can move it one decimal point, and then I have 187. And however many decimal places I move one of them, I have to do the exact same thing here. So I have to move this one decimal point to keep it all equal. And that means before I would have lined my decimal point up here, but now it's moving to after the 9. So I'm going to move my decimal point right up top above where that move decimal point landed. All right, so 187. Well, it's not going to go into 7. It's not going to go into 78. So I'm going to line it up here because it does go into 788. So I want to figure out about how many times do I think 187 is going to go into 788. Well, 187 is close to 200, and 788 is close to 800, and I know 200 goes into 800 four times. So I might just make a guess here and say I think it's going to go in about four times. And if it doesn't work out quite right, I can always adjust it. Okay, and to figure out exactly what that is, I'm going to multiply 4 by each of these digits. Okay, so 4 times 7 is 28, so I'm going to put my 8, carry the 2. 4 times 8, that's going to give me 32, plus the 2 gives me 34. So 4, carry the 3, 
And then 4 times 1 is 4, plus the 3 gives me 7. Okay, so it looks like I picked the right number because 4 times 187 gave me 748. Now I would subtract that from my 788, right? 8 minus 8 is 0, 8 minus 4 is 4, and 7 minus 7 is 0. So I have 40 left over, and then I still need to bring down this 9, right? I didn't use my digit of 9 yet. So now I want to guess, well, how many times do I think 187 is going to go into 409? Okay, well again, 187 is really close to 200. 200 would go into 400 twice. So I'm going to guess that I think it's going to go in about two times. And I'm going to cross these off because I already used those digits I carried. I don't want them to mess me up. So I think it's going to go in about two times. Okay, and then let's multiply by 2 and see what that gives us. 2 times 7 is 14. So I'm going to write the 4, carry the 1. 2 times 8 is 16, plus the 1 is 17. So I'm going to write the 7, carry the 1. 2 times 1 is 2, plus the 1 gives me 3. Okay, and then I'm going to subtract to see what I'm left with. Well, 9 minus 4 is 5. I can't subtract 0, so I'm going to carry the 1 here, make this a 3. 10 minus 7 would give me 3, and 3 minus 3 is 0. Okay, well remember, I had a decimal point here. So if I have no more numbers, I can put a point zero after that, and I can bring down the zero. Okay, and now I want to make a guess. Well, about how many times do I think 187 is going to go into 350? And I don't think it's going to go in even twice, because if I multiply it by 2, I think that's going to be a little bigger than 350. So let's say it's only going to go in one time. And of course, 1 times 187 would be 187. So let's subtract and see what that leaves us. OK, well, I'm going to have to borrow one here. 10 minus 7 gives me 3. OK, I'm going to have to borrow one here. So now that's a 14. 14 minus 8 is going to give me 6. And 2 minus 1 gives me 1. Okay, so now I have 163. And 187 is not going to go into 163, so I would have to bring down another 0. Okay, and now I have to guess how many times I think 187 is going to go into 1,630. Well, 200 would go in about 8 times, so let's guess 8, since that's pretty close to 200. Okay? And actually, I'm going to stop it here because I'm going to say dot, dot, dot. Actually, instead of keeping going, because notice I only had one decimal point on each of my answers. So let's say I round this off. at 0.18. Let's say that's close enough of an estimate. I know my, my decimal point's going to keep going from there. Let's see, what did they round that off to? Well, 42.18, it looks like all of the answer choices are whole numbers, so it looks like they rounded this to the nearest whole number. Well, if I round it down to my nearest whole number, that would be 42.